that's what helped me to get my job, I guess, in the IDF in Israel, my military service. So in my military service, I did cyber security, defense for, for the Israeli military force, forces um, for six years. So I participated in a course that's called Cyber Defenders. And I learned all kinds of stuff from um, white hat hacking, penetration testing, uh, development like Python and other languages, forensics, malware analysis, reverse engineering, all these kind of things when I was in the military. And that's what I did also after for six years, obviously. So it's not like you learn for six years in a course. Uh, <laughs> you actually do it in like, so if it's like SOC and incident response, uh, you know, and also I went to be a commander to teach the course, to educate the next generation of the cyber defenders and then became an officer and, and did operations and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I did it six years in the military and then this is just the traditional cybersecurity background. Um, <clears throat> And somewhere back then, you know, in 2013, I also got introduced to crypto, to Bitcoin and Litecoin back then, but we'll get to that later. Uh, and yeah, so since I finished the military service, I, I focused on, on education. So also after I finished it, I went to teach like in a private college in Israel. I, I teach, I educated people, I trained them for cybersecurity uh, defense and offensive as well. Uh, then in Singapore for a while, I, I worked there with their uh, defense forces, again, training cybersecurity. And yeah, so I got like plenty of experience in, in the field, in like technical experience. Is that straight out of high school um, that you went into the IDF? No, yeah, usually it's straight after high school. So once you become 18 years old, you finish your high school and then uh, it depends on the unit that you go and, uh, you know, when they accept new people. But yeah, usually you don't have much time. I had like two months in between. And yeah, when I, I joined the, the IDF, Israel Defense Forces, um, when I was 18, 18 years old. Usually it's mandatory wow. to serve like three years in the IDF. Um, I volunteered to be an officer, so I had to stay another three years as a commander. So in total six years, but three years are completely vulnerable and like um, voluntary. So it means that you basically work for the government for three years and you pay, get paid nothing. It, not nothing literally, but like hundred dollars a month, which is obviously not enough, to, especially for Israel. So that's right. So, so they pretty much trained you, right? Um, in cybersecurity, but they paid you like pennies just so you are able to live. Uh, but they gave you a lot of training around cybersecurity, like even in the first three years, is that right? Yeah, so they train you around four months and also during your service, they send you to like more courses, advanced courses like malware analysis, forensics, IR, uh, advanced PT and stuff like that. And yeah, so, and also you have tests. You, it's not like anyone is being accepted to the course. You have to go through like a series of tests and interviews, like, like a job interview. And imagine you being like 18 years old, like meeting uh, soldiers that interview you and checking your creativity and like the way you think, the, your experience in technical experience in development in like hacking. So you did like all sorts of traditional cybersecurity stuff um, with them. Um, from penetration testing to incident response and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you must have some crazy stories, I'm sure, um, from your six years of working there. Uh, are you able to share some some, some of those stories, um, assuming uh, that you won't share anything that's like confidential or anything? <laughs> I don't want to get you into trouble. Yeah. yeah, so there is a lot of confidential stuff that I obviously cannot talk about. Uh, but let's say I was surprised, like, how interesting target is the IDF, you know, the Israeli Defense Forces and in general Israel. And let's say that there are a lot of adversaries that are trying to hack different kind of systems. And we had a lot of sleepless, sleepless nights. If it's like doing like forensics for computer or analyzing uh, network capture files or, or just malwares that we found. And yeah, especially when the, there is like more like heat situation, you, you can definitely see that once they're like 
type one once there is a core for in the real you know in the real world in the in the <laughs> reality you know with like missiles and tanks and stuff like that you can see how like cybers like get gets involved and in how the enemy has like forces that sits behind computers and just trying to hack stuff and that's the most i can tell okay <laughs> so you are you are sort of involved in both the attack and defense uh, side of things? Not really. I was mostly focused on defense. I, obviously, we did like uh, white hat hacking and, and like penetration testing and assessments. And we, we developed malware in order to train other teams and plan like attacks, um, you know, like red teaming. But I didn't actually do any offensive into like, you know, another enemy or. Yeah, no, that wasn't my job. This is the, the intelligence part. 